Over the years, I've learned an awful lot of programming languages, but the one thing that I can't be bothered to do is to read my way through one of those enormous books, you know, page one to 800, telling you everything about this programming language. And yet I've learned Ruby, C, C Sharp, Java, Object Pascal, Modular 2, lots and lots of programming languages. I've been programming since the 1980s and I've had plenty of time to figure out a way of learning a language as effectively as possible. And that's what this video is about. What I don't do is I don't read huge manuals from page one to page 800. I don't do hundreds and hundreds of little programming exercises. I know that some programmers, when I've taught courses on programming, get very wound up, very uh, obsessed with solving problems of having exercises to do. Exercises have their place and they can be useful for some things, but that's not my approach to learning a new language. To learn a new language quickly and effectively, pick a project, get programming. Simple as that. I'll show you what I mean. As always, if you followed some of my other uh, tutorials, you'll probably guess the project I'm going to pick. It's going to be a simple adventure game. Adventure games are great because they bring in all sorts of stuff, string handling, uh, class libraries, file handling, uh, just about everything really. But for you, if you don't like adventure games, pick something else. It could be a disk utility. It could be I don't know, I really have no idea what interests you, but find something that you're interested in and start to learn that way. I'll show you how I do this. I'm going to show you how I started learning the D language. I picked D because it's quite a, it's a fairly well-established language, but probably one that most people are not familiar with. I've never really programmed D before. I've, I've, I've been aware of it over the years, but I've had to learn from scratch. So I'm going to show you how I got from no knowledge of D to writing a simple adventure game in about three hours. Let's see how I got started. Clearly the first thing you have to do when learning a new language is install the compiler or interpreter. That is the thing that's going to run the language for you. For D, I've gone to the D uh, programming website and found the download page. There are lots of downloads here for Windows and uh, various versions of Linux and Mac OS. I'm programming Windows. I've decided that uh, I'm going to use Visual Studio and there is a Visual Studio plugin called Visual D. I can download that. It includes the D compiler, so I don't have to do more than one step. But if you're using other operating systems, then Visual Studio Code is quite well supported. It takes a bit more setup, and unless you're very familiar with it, it'll take a bit of learning, which is why I'm really more comfortable with Visual Studio. Then I need some reference material. Well, the D site has this uh, documentation, fairly comprehensive documentation to the language and its libraries. And just as an added extra, there are also extra resources. You can see here there are various tools, editors, tutorials, and books. And so I'm going to use this book, this online book, or you can also get a PDF version so that I can dip in when I need some extra help. So having got my D IDE up and running, this is the one that's in Visual Studio. The next thing to do is to start writing something. So start a project. I can search in Visual Studio for the, a particular language. Uh, if you're using another IDE or text editor, of course, this step is going to be different. Uh, just select an application and see what happens. D application. I'll just use all the defaults. Ah, now it's prompting me console. Yeah, I'll go for console. This is the standard reference D compiler. Okay, I'll accept that. Finish. Let's see what happens. So it's gone away and it's generated something. I can see there's a D program file here. Let's have a look what's in it. Ah, so it's created a simple file for me. Let me try running that and see if it works. So it's compiling it and ah, it popped down again. So I need to put a breakpoint. Breakpoint will stop it exiting, I hope. And let me look at, okay, so hello D world, that looks okay. What do I do next? Let's stop this back in here. Well, let's see if I can guess my way through it. I've 
got some experience with C and C-like languages. Let's try a, an array of chars, a, a string, in other words. It turns out that D has more than one way of doing strings, but I'm going to stick with this char array. Uh, call it S. So this is me guessing my way through the language. So far it works. Okay, so let's have a look. I've got Reitlin. Well, let's see if there's a Reedlin. Reedlin is the same name. I, I happen to know these from Pascal. These are standard uh, names in Pascal. See if, uh, see if this works in D. And it's looking good so far. It's got, oh no, the error squiggly is gone. So let's see if I can append that to this string. Uh, normally that's with a plus S. Ah, it's not liking that. So that's where I've had to resort. This is the first time when I was learning this that I had to resort to the documentation and it tells me that I'll save you the time uh, I won't show you it all now, but you just look it up in, in online documentation. And it says tilde is the way of appending one string to another. And instead of putting a breakpoint this time, I'm going to put readlin. And just like Pascal, it also lets me omit the uh, empty brackets if I wish to. And I just found that again by trial and error. Uh, you know, no special magic on this. So let's see what happens. Okay, so enter my name. It should read that. Assign it to the string S and it displays the string. It's paused at the end because of that final read line I put. It's waiting to read the final line. I, it'll do that when I press enter. And there you go. So that's my first program. All of that was done with guesswork apart from this one thing I had to look up this tilde to find out how to append a string. So that was my first five minutes. I said that I took about three hours. Let's see what I accomplished in the first hour. Well, I'm trying here to create a class. That's a class that's going to define an object. When I've looked at other D tutorials, they leave classes and object orientation on the whole really till the later chapters. You might be well, well into the tutorial before you can look at it. Well, I decided that I need to find out how to use this quite quickly. So again, mostly this is guesswork from my knowledge of other C-like languages. That's uh, C-sharp and Java, for example, uh, create classes and let you derive objects from them. So I created a class called Thing and I you, this is the string data type. So I said uh, D does have a string data type. So I've given it a name field. I had to look up how to create a constructor. It's using the this keyword and then you pass to it arguments. And here the argument, the string argument, is used to initialize the name field. And I wanted then to have the name itself, the name field, private. So it's encapsulated, so the data is hidden. And to have accessors. And the way that I chose to do it was to have uh, accessors called name. Now, even though these have got the same names, these two methods, they uh, d d differentiates between them because they've got different argument lists. So I can assign a string using this one and I can return a string, the string name using that one. Now I then dis descended uh, another class, room from thing. This again was guesswork because I've come across various different syntaxes of creating lines of descent. And so it turns out that indeed this colon is put between the new name and the ancestor class name. But again, if you wanted to, you know, if you couldn't figure that out, just simply looking it up in some documentation, we'll explain that very quickly. Now the room inherits the name from the thing class and it adds on these integers, north, south, west, east. Those are the exits in uh, to uh, other rooms. Then this is its constructor. It takes all those arguments and it calls super. Again, I guessed this from uh, experience with other languages. Uh, it calls the super class passing to it a name and then it initialized these arguments. Now, down here, I've just messed about. I mean, this code is all over the place, really. But that's a really important stage when you're learning a language. Just mess about. It doesn't matter if you if you muck things up. I, I mean, in fact, you should because you're really 
trying to find your way around the language. So I've created a new thing. I've uh, used writing, which I've done before, and uh, then I've created a new room, and now I've written this uh, here. This, this is uh, just a prompt character. Read the string that the user enters, created a new thing. Now, s.dap, this is to do with how strings are handled, the difference between strings and uh, character arrays. There is a distinction made. So this, a, a string has been read here and I need it to be uh, duplicated as a character array. I had to look that up. That was one thing that I wouldn't just guess. I, I did look that up. And so this is the kind of process I go through when I'm messing around, I hit a problem. That's the stage at which I have to go to the documentation to look things up. I discovered that, as expected, I can pass an argument like this. An alternative syntax, I, I just found this through messing around and trying it out, is to use it like a, a property in C Sharp, where you use this like a variable, even though it's actually a method, and assign the string, the single argument, to it. Um, the rest, I think, is fairly straightforward. Oh, the I wanted dis to display the number, the integer, on the north side. Again, I had to look up how to convert an integer into a string representation, and I found that this is the way to do it, two exclamation mark and string, and in order to do that, I had to import std.conv. So again, that was something I had to look up. Um, is there anything else that needs explaining here? I don't think so. Oh yes, there is one thing. I tried to make this private. Again, these are things I had to look up. How do you make sections of a class private or public? And so by putting private colon, I can declare a section of private variables here, and then these access, these methods are public. However, I discovered that I can actually, if I wanted, my private variables underscore name, that shouldn't be available if it's private, should it? So I should have an error there, I'm expecting, but uh, apparently not. So again, that's something I had to look up. Why is that privacy not being observed? It turns out that in D, even if something is private in a class, if it's all in the shared module, that's this single code file in this case, then it will be public, which is not what I want. So I had to find out next how to create a module. Again, that's something I looked up in documentation. So here I would say in my first hour, I guessed maybe 80% of the code and I ran into a few problems, which I've mentioned. That's when I had to look up the documentation. Right, so this is my rewritten version. Here I've added a module to hold my thing and room class. Uh, in Visual Studio, that's done with right-clicking the project, and then you can cl click Add and add a new item. Obviously, that's going to be different in other editors or IDEs. But you can see I've just created a module called My Classes, I've given it the name up here, and it's in a file called MyClasses.d. This is just the same code that I had in the previous. Uh, version, I've still got string underscore name marked as private. Now, if I go into the main file, the file that starts the program, that just creates a room and it prompts me, uh, it, sorry, it writes this prompt here and it says you are in, etc, etc. The difference here is if I try to access that private field now, I get this squiggly, it says that there's no property underscore name. And so that is how I've enforced the privacy, just by creating a new module and importing that module. Okay, so after that experimentation, I now think I'm ready to start writing the very, very simplest possible adventure game. Here I want a map containing four rooms. So I've already defined the room object, as I've shown. Uh, Pause the int variable defines the player's position, uh, which starts off as zero. I've drawn out this little map. So R0 is the name of the first room. It goes east to room one, R1, south to room two, and that goes east 
to room three, and there are no exits in the other directions. I've then created the rooms. You can see in the four rooms down here, and I've added them to an array. So I've defined a room array called map to contain four rooms. And I've just added them one by Now, all of this has been done with guesswork because I've used arrays in other languages. And if you've used C Sharp or Java um, or, or some other C-like language, you can probably make a good guess at how to do this. I, I might have made a few mistakes along the way, but it was fairly simple to uh, rectify. Then I've just written this move to method. So it takes a, a number and that's the number of the, the room the, to, to be moved to. And if it's minus one, minus one means uh, no exit in that direction. Well, if it's minus one, I just display no exit. Otherwise, it updates the player's position. That's the pause variable to the new room number. And it writes you have moved into and then it goes into it indexes into the map and it gets the name of the room at that position. Then there's my main function down here. That's what executes when the program runs. This is all fairly straightforward. Uh, I've got exit as an integer. Uh, oh, first of all, it calls init. So init, where is that? So that's this method. That's the method that first creates the rooms and the map. Okay, so it calls init. Then it writes that you are in, uh, well, it's room zero because pause starts off as zero at the start of the game. Then I've got this do while loop. Again, I, I looked up loops in the doc documentation, but I was guessing there would be something like do while, as that's a common sort of loop. So that executes the loop while this condition is true. And the condition is that the player has not ent entered Q, the string Q, uh, to exit. So not equals, that's again guessed from my knowledge from other C-like languages. Uh, switch case, again, that's very like in, in other C-like languages. It's just a multiple choice. So if the player enters the string S, that's read in from the command prompt up here. If the player enters that string um, and it's the string is N, then I find the exit uh, of at the N position, the north position in the room. The room is the uh, map is that there's the room object at, at the current position. And it's the same for S, W, E, and the default is no exit. So that should all work in principle. Let's see if it does. So south should go to, oh, there should have been a room there, and east, I can't even use quit. There is something wrong with my code. So this is my other secret weapon. Before I go on to that, I should say, you know, that when I say I'm looking things up, um, I've got online documentation, which I refer to, and I'm going to be referring to that shortly because my uh, assumption is that there is something wrong with the way that I've read this string. The string is not being recognized as, as N. It's not matching this uh, and so on. So let's see what's wrong. So I'll do it again. So let's enter S. Now that should match the string S. But let's have a look at what S is. It looks like S. Ah, but if I expand it using the debugger by pressing that arrow, I can see there are two characters. There's an S followed by the value 10. That's an ASCII code 10, which is a line feed, not a character return, which is 13. And so when I'm expecting it to match S down here, let me put another breakpoint down here. I'm expecting it to match S. It doesn't because I'm testing that the string is one character long. That's just a single S. Back to my documentation. Okay, so this is where I start looking things up. I've got this programming in D reference here, and I'm looking for something to trim off in, in many languages, it's called trim. I, I tried that and it didn't work. So I've gone to the documentation to see if I can find something else. And this is what I find. In D, the function that strips off the um, non-printing characters like spaces and carriage returns and line feeds is called strip. And I assign it back to a variable as shown in this documentation. So 
that's all the documentation I looked up to get this to work. Let's try that. So according to this documentation, I should be able to call it S equals strip S. Uh, it seems happy with that. One other thing I've had to do, by the way, again, this is where you look in the documentation, is I've had to import std.string to get this to work. Let's see if that works. And right, this time the breakpoint is hit. Let's have a look what S is. Yeah, so it's got rid of the row character, continue. And it's hit the case statement that I'm expecting it to continue. Let's get rid of all these breakpoints now so I can just continue watching the running program. Okay, so yes, I've moved into a new room. East, there should be another room, and there is. East again, should be no exit, and there is. West, and I can move around the game by entering the directions and Q should quit because that's the test statement down here uh, that exits from this loop. So that's my first, I would say about three hours from knowing no D at all to writing a very simple object oriented adventure game. So I'm pretty pleased with that. That in short is how I go about learning a new language. Now, as I said, this has been about my approach to learning a new language. It's not a tutorial to D. Experienced D programmers will have much more effective and efficient ways, I am quite sure, of programming what I have shown than I used in this, uh, in this video, because these are just my first few hours learning the language. So whether you're learning D or Rust or Java or C Sharp or C or C++, whatever you're learning, what I really want to get across is an, a way of starting to learn that language without getting bogged down with thinking you've got to read every single chapter in, in order in some impenetrably long book uh, or solve hundreds and hundreds of exercises. Anyway, I hope that's given you an insight into how I approach it and maybe you can take something of use from this video. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and to make sure you don't miss any of my other videos, be sure to subscribe to my channel, ring the bell, and I'll see you again soon with something different.